away from Giants, Rumble taken away from Huni. What I'm very interested to see is if they're going to go for a first pick Rek'Sai. Something that we've seen from Rainover is that when he's not on Rengar, Olaf, or Rek'Sai, he doesn't play anything else. We've not seen him play Lee Sin, we've not seen him play Jarvan, and Jarvan we've not seen him play anywhere. Yeah, and even that Olaf game, that last one against Gambit didn't quite have the effect that they wanted. Lissandra Banna, this is the same thing that Gambit was doing to Huni last week. They take away his two best top laners, he did not look good on Maokai. Morgana now banned away by Fnatic. So, slightly different bans from Fnatic. These are heavily, heavily targeted. Audrey on surveys played it twice. It is statistically his strongest AD carry. 10 kills, 3 deaths, 12 assists. And taking away the Morgana removes both the flex pick option as well as also taking away Rydal's most played support champion. So I think it's quite smart, but I did somewhat expect this first pick Rek'Sai. We know that Raynova only had either Olaf left in the tank, or he has to surprise us and show us a Lee Sin or a Jarvan for the first time. Yeah, we'll see what he does decide to do, but I think it makes a lot of sense to first pick that Rek'Sai. But Fnatic, right away, they take the Kalista and the Cassidy. So, just a reminder for everybody at home, we are playing on 5.3. This is not 5.4, so Cassidy is still old Cassidy, still the most popular champion here in Europe. But the Kalista is an interesting change. We've not seen Steel back on many champions. He plays cleanup, he plays late game, and Kalista is still going to fit into that style. This is the fourth champion that he's played, and for somebody like Steelback, who is not good in a 2v2, as a fact, he's behind all of his lane opponents in CS. I want to see how well he can farm, because if Giants can keep him down and delay his blade into Hurricane, into BT, whatever build he decides to optimize, it could be a smart way. For Fnatic, it's all about scaling. They can't afford to fall behind early. Agreed. And for Giants gaming side, they have a lot of choices to make here. The Zed is going to get locked in. The Corky as well. So I was thinking he might go for the Graves, but the Corky also makes some sense in this situation. And now Fnatic have the opportunity here to pick up the other Cass and potentially send Huni on the Cassin or even switch it up that way. I mean, Huni does love these AP mages top. Yeah, that's definitely the case. Uh, but I do want to touch on the Giants lock-ins. With Zed and Corky, they needed a uh, magic damage threat because Zed and Rek'Sai already a lot of physical being put on the map, as well as some split pushing power. I like the Corky, it's gonna give you wave clear, it's gonna give you some of that mixed damage to help out itemize, and it's also gonna synergize with an early to mid game power spike. So if Frederick can have some good ganks and move around the map effectively, he can combo with that Zed and Corky very effectively. You're right, and Giants have been looking like a team that's so much transformed from what we saw them in the early stages of the split, being much more proactive, moving around the map, securing objectives, Yes, they were losing for quite a lot of the game against Elements until they turned that around. But in their in their next game, it was so much more proactive against the Unicorns of Love. And there we go, Fnatic. They get the lock-in. They take a Nunu and an Alistair. It's already a very different team comp than what we're used to seeing. So, as you said, this is something different. And this is all about control. This Nunu should go into the jungle, and it's going to allow Rainover to move around the map to look, look for some counter jungling and get some vision down. Something that I love from watching some of the uh, LCK region Nunus is just an early side stone and just littering the map with wards. Fnatic have got the highest wards per minute placed of any European team this split. And if they decide to play that same style, it's going to allow a mobile Cassidy, a mobile Callista to move around the map. You combo that with the CC from Alistair and you do have a very scary skirmish team. But for Fnatic, they've got to be a little careful because their front line is all about mobility. They're all about dancing around in team fights as opposed to just sitting down and full on sort of death balling somebody. Ah, and on the side of Giants. So we're going to see the cannon lock in for Whirlib. He has played a number of champions up top, but so far, Kennen has not been one of them. On the other hand, Rydal, he had been denied the Thresh quite a lot. It was actually banned out several times, and now that he has a chance to go back to it with Morgana being taken off the table, that's what they choose. Statistically, Rydal's not been as good on Thresh as he has on Morgana, so we need to see if he can level up his, his Thresh game. But you know, the story of Whirlib here in the spring split, when Jax got banned away after week one, this is Whirlib's ninth champion in 11 games. So he's really struggling to find a champion or a playstyle that's going to fit into both his team comp and his ability to impact the lane. But what I like about the cannon, again, it rounds out your damage. You've got a good mixture of AP of AD. You've got a Giants team comp that feels like a Gambit team comp. They're going to be focusing on engage and on damage. And as long as they can get the squishy damage threats of Cassidy and Callista, 
they should actually have a good team fight. It's all about finding the champion and getting rid of him quickly. Mm -hmm. And in all the craziness that has been this pick band phase, Nar ekes his way through to the very last pick. Huni's going to be able to pick that one up. We'll see how he does on that. He's played it once, hasn't had a win on it. I, I don't know. You know. Look, Huni's a great player, and there's a lot of fan support behind him, but his Nar performance, um, it actually may have been against the Unicorns if memory serves, uh, was not particularly strong. Uh, he was landing, he was not landing his ultimates effectively. He had some hops and some stuns from the wallop, which was half decent, but it simply, it, it was not the same level of mastery or control that we've seen from the likes of his rumblers, Lissandra. What this does do, though, is with the Nar CC plus Nunu, it buys a huge amount of zone control. There's not a lot of champions that can get through the Nar, then get through the Nunu to get to a Kassadin and a Kalista. So the only role that Huni and Raynov are going to be playing in this particular matchup is zoning, keeping people away from Kalista and Kassadin, because if they do not do that, the double damage threat is at risk of being outscaled, at risk of being shut down. If, if, if the squishy team of Giants can get ahead. Because, of course, they don't have a traditional tank. So. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that one up. A very, very squishy team. So, I mean, I feel like they're going to butt heads. There's going to be a lot of blood. But what do you guys think about all of that? Let us know with your tweets in this matchup. Go ahead and send those tweets over to at LOL Esports using the hashtag FNC win or GIA win. But we're loading up onto the rift for the start of week number six. The crowd is hyped. How about you at home? I'm looking forward to seeing what Giants do. Um, if, if we go back and we look at the week two game, or week three game rather, between Giants and Fnatic, Frederick actually had a very good start to the game, uh, playing against Rainover's Rengar. And he counter ganked him, he read Rainover's early pressure, and it got Giants first blood, it got them decent enough lanes. The problem is, Frederick and the rest of the lanes, they couldn't maintain that level of performance. So they, were, they fell behind after repeated attempts. Raynov is not going to have that same level of impact. He's not going to have that same ganking power on Anunu. This is a lot more about vision, about control, and about scaling. Yeah, and I'm really curious to see what Fnatic wants to do overall in this early game. You see the Giants have gone for the lane swap up top. Right now, Huni has no idea this is happening. He knows vaguely that Whirlib's in the area, and they're going to ping each other out. But that, you know, that's almost like a fake out here. It's like, oh, he's going, his, he's going up top, so I, I don't have to worry about the 1v2. Yeah, we need to see how, how Giants play this lane out. The, 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 the opportunities are there. With Rek'Sai with Thresh, you can set early picks up. And in terms of the 2v2, the fact that Yellow Star is obviously on this melee Alistair, not looking to get into a lane where he can get bullied. You don't want to ever be in a position where Rydal on Thresh with that Relic Shield is just going to keep hammering away, keeping you down, so that Yellow Star and Steelback are going to be farming. You know, we touched on this earlier. Steelback at 10 minutes is traditionally down a minimum of 9 CS, uh, an average rather, of 9 CS against his lane opponent. So we need to see if that happens again because he's on a champion that needs to get early farm and needs to get those items. We'll see what he does indeed. Steelback himself making oh, moves up no. top, but he's going to run into the brush and he gets flayed back. Ignites on, burns his flash. Here we go, Rydal. That won't be enough to take him down, but a summoner for a summoner. Steelback gets away as the rest of Fnatic invading the jungle. There was no vision. Steelback just flat on face checks. I'm sure there's a tip. When you load onto the rift, there's one of those tips on the loading screen that says don't face check bushes. Steelback forgot about that and is forced to burn his flash. It's not the end of the world if you can get the support from Yellow Star. The pulverize and the knockback from Alistair can help save him. But it just means Steelback is going to lose CS because he has to play defensively now. He's actually going to swap back down. They're, they're making moves slowly that way. They spend the teleport on Huni to move up there. So after taking a bit of the jungle here, Fnatic getting a little bit greedy as they took away so much of Frederick's jungle up top. He's going to be in for a rude awakening. But you're right. Steelback, he's not going to have that flash available. They've had to burn the teleport on Huni. So they don't quite have the map pressure for a few moments if Giants want to do something crazy. And speaking of crazy, here's Rydal. What's he doing out there? So Rainover set himself up for a three buff. This is a decent start. Despite the fact that Steelback lost his flash top, Rainover is going to at least slow down Frederick a touch. It's not the end of the world that he's lost the camps, but it's, it is a positive position for Rainover to be in. I want to see if he can make it to his blue buff before anyone from Giants manages to set themselves up. But again, for Rainover, it's going to be all about setting up the vision to ensure Pepinero can't flank and to try prevent and mitigate the Whirlib engages on that cannon. If you think back to Kabashad last week, his flash slicing maelstroms were 
incredibly impactful. And in the mid lane, Frederick and Pippin are they, they're thinking about an aggressive dive, but I, I think it's a bit early. It might be a bit ill-advised, but both these teams, again, they we said they like to butt heads. I, I wouldn't be too surprised to see that. You can see the Vivian leaving behind those little bits of tremor sense. Frederick thinking about that one. Yellow Star now roaming back into his own. He's gotta go in. Yep, he is. The Vivian, oh, quick flash. So two flashes down. Three weeks ago, Giants did exactly the same thing. Frederick was involved in some early pressure on the lanes, and it allowed Giants to get uh, an early leg up in the match. But it didn't translate into anything else. It didn't translate to kills. It didn't translate to gold. And there's the tunnel. He's going to go again. He tried to clear that one out. Didn't quite have the timing. Night is ticking. They eat a tower shot to say, you know, maybe it's a little early. Yeah, so Flash was burned from Febervin. Febervin manages to survive. But look at the pressure that Frederick is already giving. Uh, the middle lane for Pepe Nero. Going to give him a small CS advantage. And it's also going to make Febervin just play a lot more defensively in that lane. Yeah, meanwhile, Rainover was able to grab his blue back. So... You know, they did get the three buff complete. Rydal now moving down to help out Whirlib. It's kind of a giveaway where Yellow Star's sitting, but to the soul bound there. <laughs> so Yellow Star just able to bait out that lightning rush from Whirlib. Of course, just a reminder, it is 5.3, so Kassadin is still, his Rift Walk is still very, very strong and powerful. And it's more of a Rift Run. <laughs> more of a Rift Run, I like that. But we need to see how impactful Whirlib can be. I think for the, the team fights to be very impactful for Giants, Whirlib can get into a good spot to stun up and root either Febivin or Steelback. And considering you've got a very mobile Rex, a very mobile Zed, the CC that can come out from Thresh, there is the possibility to lock down Steelback for a prolonged period of time. You just need one of those hard CCs to hit initially and then chain everything thereafter. The only thing Giants have to do is get past that very defensive front line of Gnar plus two. Speaking of Gnar, after he's having a little bit of trouble, he's going to peg a few missiles at the giant dinosaur. Usually works pretty well in movies. Only if you're the good guy. And that's yes, relative it's true. in the LCS. But Frederick, again, just trying to play aggressively. He's got himself that uh, Stalker's Blade. And trying to control Rainover's jungle. This is important to note. Nunu generally has very good clear time, has the ability to move around the map quickly and place wards. So we'll see whether or not Rainover can get control right now. Pepe's in trouble for yellow. He's been surrounded. Yep, he gets the death mark onto Rainover, tries to move his way out of danger, and he does because the rest of Giants were coming up. Crisis averted for Giants gaming. Both teams really roaming a lot around the map. And that's something I also just realized that we didn't talk about in uh, Picks and Bands. The wave clear is next to non-existent for Fnatic. So if they get into a position where they have to defend from a siege, they will have the engage power of a Gnar plus Alistair. But if Giants can keep poking them down, get some damage from Corky, and you know, have an opportune time with the wave, they could, in theory, get some uh, good damage down early. So for Fnatic, again, it's all going to come down to the vision. They can't afford to get caught out, out of position, or they'll lose big chunks of their towers and eventually the tower itself. Yeah, they have to be very, very careful of that one. And Giants, on the other hand, definitely trying to dictate the pace of the game. Taking a look at that fan vote. Fnatic Nation coming up big with an 82%. Thinking this one is going to be in the bag for them. But Giants, they have surprised us in Look the last Alistair. couple of weeks. Yeah, he's hanging out up top. I expect Audrey to be in a world of hurt in just a minute. Nar against the wall, the knock up, the knock back, and the exhaust for the insurance policy. This is going to be first blood, and it goes over to Hooney. Meanwhile, though, Giants respond. Well executed. Can Fnatic push the wave in? We need to see how quickly they can get damage onto the tower. The rest of Fnatic are going to dance around. There's no support here from Steelback. He does have his flash available, but yeah, well executed gank. The roaming yellow star was able to set up a very strong play. That was the Giants fans down in front of the bleachers supporting the dragon kill. You have to weigh up what the difference is. I think getting Huni off to a positive start is good. Yes, it's not been from jungle interaction, but that's fine because you can have a roaming ganking support instead. Therefore, Fnatic still have their pick focus style, but it didn't equate to an objective or even damage on that tower. Yeah, they, they kind of waffled for a moment. They just sat there and, oh, okay, do we push this? Oh, okay, now we're going to go ahead and back. But it was a really good first blood, but they did give up something for it. So Giants, this is a team that we have seen in the last couple weeks evolve to get to a point where they're very, very confident. In, okay, something happened. Now we're going to go take advantage of something on the bottom of the map. That is what the best teams are able to do very seamlessly. And they're stepping up to it. I've been very impressed at how they've changed week over week. Interesting first item pickup here from Pepe Nero. Done for the Hex Drinker. Just to go for this extended lane against Febivit. And needlessly large Rod picked up for Whirlib. Thanks to getting a good amount of farm. So fair amounts of power for the Giants members. Rainover. 
is coming to gank. Willard has his uh, slicing maelstrom as well Ooh. as a flash, insta flash. Yeah, he has to immediately still gets the house thrown at him. So Willard not having the easiest of times, but he's got quite a lot of damage there. Giants back in their own jungle. Pepper, Pepinero looking for, looks like the scuttle crab will be on the menu. Yellow Star getting caught on a hook. They get some serious damage on him, but he heals a portion of it up. And there's a perfect example of the terrible wave there from Fnatic in action. Steelback is slightly behind on CS despite losing Flash early. The, the lane swap allowed him to farm up relatively well, but Yellowstar's not going to do anything without relic stacks, and even in, in that scenario, he still has to get in range to take a death sentence. So uh, you can see Audrey and Rydal pushing the wave up. They've got a pink ward in the river. You've got Rainover, who's not a particularly strong ganker. Giants have got a very good strategy to take advantage of the comp they're playing against. They know there's no wave player, there's no, they know there's no Rek'Sai for that hard engage on a gank. As long as they can see Nunu running in, they've got all the time in the world to play with. Yeah, Giants, they hold several more cards in that situation. Gold is about bang even in this situation. Only 100 difference separating these two teams, and that is in the pockets of Fnatic. Rydal tries to push Yellow Star back. There's the flash. Rainover going to throw it on the ice ball. The knockup. Do they have enough damage? Absolute zero. Going to get moved away. Frederick now collapsing on the pile, and Audrey is going to make some help for him. Steelback now is the one that goes down. They're looking for Rainover for round number two. Can they get the second kill? It looks like it. Audrey is going to come up with that one. Giants counter gank too strong. It was very well played. I initially thought Rydal should not have stuck around, but he baited in <laughs> Fnatic to go Speaking deeper. Fnatic had to run all the way down the lane. Frederick flanks from behind, and just a well-executed counter gank, like you said. Fnatic trying to focus Rydal, and Audrey, still with 100% HP, went untouched in that fight. So a very good play from Giants. They're taking advantage of their lane matchups. They're taking advantage of their opponent's lane weaknesses. And that's what's allowed them to get this nearly 2,000 gold. Yeah, and just like that, we were mentioning a moment ago that it was just about even, but the two kills, they changed quite a lot there. They got the tower on top of it. There's the Rek'Sai Scream, just going to be going for some tasty, tasty farm. But Fnatic, yeah, they're not seeming to be responding quite well to these situations. They've set up a couple of plays. One's gone well, but they've traded a dragon for it. A second one now has completely fizzled out, and it's Giants that are on the offensive. So to go back to picks and bans, Take away Lissandra and Rumble from Huni. Take away Rengar and Rek'Sai from Rainover, and they're in trouble. Febivin is not in trouble just here, he had the support. But the problem that we have is Fnatic have a different style, especially in the laning phase, with this roaming support and this supportive jungler. Fnatic need to get to the mid game, they need items. And look, no wave clear, Giants take another uncontested tower. Yeah, it's too dangerous for them to get up in there and try to push things back with the way Giants are playing right now. So 2,000 gold lead, as you said, in favor. They're leaving Steel back and bottom just to try to farm out the wave in a safe lane that he's got now. But look at this, Giants, they're free to roam into the Fnatic jungle and just continue to push the vision game back to try and collapse on members of Fnatic and make them feel unsafe. Yeah, and for Fnatic, they need to stop hemorrhaging gold. If Giants can keep control of the jungle and keep extending their gold lead, Cassidy and Callista are never going to have enough time to power up and never going to have enough uh, farm to, to have the damage to get through all of their opponents. You look at Febivin, he's got no combat stats outside of some HP to survive Pepinero's burst. So with that in mind, for Fnatic, it's all about trying to stall the game out over the next few minutes. I can't see them defending this top tower if Giants fully commit. But well, let's see what they can do. Rainover's got his full ultimate available. Febivin's moving up. There's actually four members of Fnatic just to defend the outer tower. Yeah, they're spending as much as they can. So it's, it's a 4v4 in the situation. I don't think Giants really fancy taking that one so close to the Meganar form. But if they can wait this out on the next wave, they can certainly push it in. Meanwhile, so many wards being cleared out here by Giants. There's the Meganar going up. Uni's actually going to wander right into Whirlup and Frederick who barely blink about it. Frederick's the one who gets his back stopped. But again, they can come back anytime and do this whenever they want. Yeah, for Giants, because of the wave clear, because of the fact that they have control of the lanes, you're 100% right. But it was around this point that Giants lost control the last time they played Fnatic. Uh, the thing is, though, that was three weeks ago. And last week, Giants absolutely demolished Unicorns of Love. Interestingly, after all of the talk of Giants and how well they were doing, a missed time of backs allows Fnatic to pick up an uncontested tower. And that was just poor decision-making from Giants, but well-played from Fnatic to realize that the numbers have gone back and they could push the tower down. 
Let's see if Giants can pick up the second Dragon to fly. Yeah, they do have the positioning on this one. Not quite enough damage just yet. It's just Audrey and Rydal here. Here comes Pepinero as well. And you can see that Frederick, their smite's kind of off at an angle, just trying to box them out and make sure that he sees the vision on. This should be an easy Dragon pickup for Giants Gaming, and they have been so fixated on these objectives. That one goes over to them. Still, gold gap, only about 1,000 now. So Fnatic trying to steal blue buff. You can see Giants trying to respond, but Frederick is surrounded by Fnatic members. Thought there may have been some altercation coming out with Kenan moving in. There's the opportunity to engage, and it looks like Giants want to pick it. Yep. Frederick going to go ahead and lay down the smite. Grabs him the blue buff back, steals it back away, rather, from the members of Fnatic. Speaking of steal back, he's going to go ahead and take his red buff up in that topside jungle. But yeah, Fnatic, they made a good move up top. They took advantage of the timing window that they had. They still gave up a dragon, though. What, what impresses me about Giants this game is even in the situations where they're making mistakes, they have been able to get something out of it. Yes, I think that's fair. You know, they, they lost that tower top, but had the members in the middle lane able to secure the dragon. And what we were saying just before that tower went down is that the Unicorns of Love, they didn't need to steal a Baron. Uh, Giants didn't need to steal a Baron from the Unicorns of Love last week to win the game. You know, we, we looked at a replay earlier on the analyst desk. And Giants had a 7,000 gold lead and four dragons, I believe, to one or two before that Baron attempt happened. So Giants are just also one of these teams that's growing, that's developing their abilities. Whirlip is at a good laning phase, CS well despite the fact that he was in that lane swap. And even though Giants had given up a kill, if you look, they're ahead in every single lane as far as CS is concerned. Yeah, you know, they, they said over and over again at the start of the split that they just want to stay in the LCS. Well, they're certainly going about it the right way. Here we go, they've caught Yellowstar in a line. There's the chilling smite down. He's trying to tank up everything. Unbreakable Will is on. And Huni, Gon Meganar, they're going to try to kite him around here. They've not got the minions just yet, but they're coming up right behind. Giants should be able to take down tower number three in just a moment. No Unbreakable Will from Yellowstar, no Callista, no Cassadin. There's no way Fnatic can defend that tower. And Giants continue to control the game. So much so that Whirlib's even going to defend the bottom tower as well from Febivin. But this is where it becomes difficult. This is where Giants need to make sure they've got all of the wards inside Fnatic's jungle to ensure that they can keep roaming from middle to top, middle to bottom, and actually set something up. Yeah, you mentioned the warding too. They're walking over a whole forest of their own. Whirlib's in a little bit of trouble here. Throws down the Maelstrom. Febivin taking quite a lot of damage, but the Ignite's ticking away at Whirlib's health bar. Run, Kennen, run if you can. Rift walk. Oh, he's stunned up. Oh, the flash. Oh, my goodness. And Whirlib didn't even use his hourglass. I doubt it would have helped. There was a lot of HP still to burn through on Febivin. But a well-timed engage from Febivin. Not over Frederick. He wants rain over. He does. Grabs a Prey Seeker on the back. Audrey, they're still hanging out quite heavily in this Fnatic jungle right now. But that was a good individual outplay. We'll see if it can help Fnatic get back into this one. The tower, though, was successfully defended. That was the point of Giant's play there. Yeah, it was. And the one thing that I like about the play is Febivin was very patient. He waited for Frederick to use his cooldowns, and then he engaged. So the risk of spell damage reply was lowered, at least for a few seconds. You can see Frederick, as well as the rest of Giants, they've got some vision in the top half of the jungle from Fnatic. They've had control of the dragon, and with the Scuttle Crab, and dragon coming up in a few minutes' time, you expect Giants to continue looking. For Fnatic, it's that ticking time bomb. How much, how close and how relevant can they stay until they're forced to pick that dragon fight? We may be in for one of those games, but you see, Rod of Ages picked up, Blade of the Rune King picked up, Fnatic slowly, slowly getting their footing back into the game. Yeah, they are. They took a little while to get going, but once Fnatic does hit the gas, it has been historically trouble for their opponents. But I'm just really curious to see how this composition works out from because this is the kind of thing that is, we were expecting to see something very different. We know that teams, they've been targeting out Huni's champion pool now. And with Fnatic, this lineup that they've got for themselves, you know, there's only two kills to either team. It's not been as bloody as we might have anticipated 18 minutes into the game but they've not gotten nearly as many objectives, and that's what worries me for this squad. Yeah, more importantly for Giants is the fact that they have those objectives. They have two towers more. They have a dragon, uh, two dragons more, and there's still only 1,300 gold ahead. You know, that, that CS advantages that Giants have built up, they've actually squandered over the last few minutes because of how they've been moving between the lanes. They've given Fnatic the opportunity to farm up the waves that are being pushed into them. So for Giants, they need to look for the objective they can pick a fight around. Previously, it was the three outer towers. Fnatic's not engaged on the dragon. With dragon coming up in a minute and a half, maybe that's where Giants can find a way in. And the only thing Giants have to do in a team fight 
kill Febivin or steal back quickly. And then they should have enough damage to burn through the two tanks, well, three tanks actually, of Na, Nunu, and Alistair. We'll see if they can bait them into that one. Dragon's about a minute away from spawning. And you'd think Fnatic would definitely try to contest this. Third Dragon, this early on in the game, it's going to be really, really big if Giants do secure it. They'll get that extra boost speed, make it even easier to rotate around the map. But you can see Fnatic setting up, trying to make sure that this does not go blind. You can tell that they want this one. Yeah, and, and even, even just having the information to pick and engage. You notice that both Cannon and Zed we're near the top lane pushing the wave out. So if Fnatic can see an opportunity to land a flash pulverize from Alistair or have Huni jump in there with a, a mega nar nar nar, nar, however, nar. However you say it, when his ultimate is the same as the champion name. But if you can get a good ultimate stun, that can be how Fnatic start things off. But Huni's gonna be a little careful. He is in a pinch, and if Mega Nar times out, Cannon and Zed maybe could go for him, but it would cost Giants. Dragon control as Fnatic have the numbers down the bottom half of the map. Yeah, now that the Meganar has gone up too, they have the teleport available, looks like, as well, on the side of Giants Gaming. They're not going to need it necessarily unless... Well, there we go. Huni's going to back, so... They got to start moving for this one now. It's, oh, it's live, but... Oh, he throws the rocket and it doesn't connect. So Fnatic actually made a power move here to get themselves in Dragon position, but it's going to be so hard for them to fight for this. Now it will be, but keep in mind, Fnatic have got the Fates Call engage. If Alistair gets pulled up, he can be lobbed into the Giants team, but will Whoa, it? Teleport. The initiator. Yep, there's another teleport as well, and kind of just waffling around for a moment, and actually it's going to be Whirlip that's caught out. He's going to come in with the Maelstrom on the Lantern. Yellow Star's health bar is melting. They're going to look for Rain over and Huni. Deathmark on Exhaust as well. Steelback is the one who picks up Rydal to start this off. Big Gnar against the wall. It's a double kill going over to Steelback. Giants are scattered. They pick up another. Three kills to none, and that is a well-earned dragon. Giants had one task to win a team fight, and it was kill Steelback or kill Febivin. But the rest of Fnatic were able to zone the Giants away. You saw Pepe Nero and Frederick diving onto Steelback, trying to catch him, and simply could not do it. A perfectly executed from Fna a team fight from Fnatic. Pay very careful attention to Steelback's positioning. Whirlip does not have flash available, so he can't flash over the wall and get a slicing maelstrom into the middle of the team. And half of this duration is just wasted. I actually really like the absolute zero from Rainover, because yes, it was interrupted fairly shortly, but it kept Fnatic away from the side lanes. And once Steelback was at risk of dying, he then pulled Yellowstar to him for Yellowstar to do some healing and some zoning. But again, just a very, very well executed team fight from Fnatic. Giants couldn't find the target. Yeah, could not at all. They grabbed a tower after the fact. You know, they went to go mid. They nearly picked off that tower, but then, of course, we got into the pause. I mean, so much action in just a few moments. And that just kind of seems to be the calling card of Giants games. This time around, didn't quite work well for them. Yeah, we'll have to see if, if Giants can bounce back. Uh, we just heard from production that Huni is doing a quick client restart, so hopefully we can get him back into the match. <laughs> Ooh, the, the cheer is going up. Oh, yeah, so that one's For the headset. Oh, okay, it. okay. So you can see, of course, that, that big swing in control. Giants were ahead, 1,500, 2,000 gold for the majority of the 20 minute laning phase, but one team fight, one tower, it's gonna be too shortly, and Fnatic now regain control. Yeah, this is the power of Fnatic and their team fight when they manage to find the angle of engage on you. They had those three super tanks, they made sure that nothing got through the wall that was Fnatic's front line. And Giants, they, they took a moment, they hesitated after the teleport, and Whirler was kinda like, guys, do we go, do we not? And that was all it took for Fnatic, and they took the fight. And the problem is, Whirlip teleported into a ward that was not optimal. If Whirlip had been able to flash over into the river and get the Slicing Maelstrom down on three or four members of Fnatic, with the fact that he had the Hourglass and the Sork Shoes, that damage could have helped kill Steelback. You saw Steelback was down to, what, 10, 15% in the team fight. So purely not having that flash available is what cost them the team fight, in my opinion. Um, Whirlip had to grab that lantern, he got pulled away. His ultimate simply fizzled because there was nobody around to stun, there was nobody around to hit. Yeah. So for Fnatic, it worked out well, worked out in their favor. And I, I'm very interested to see how, how they play these team fights because there's a ticking time bomb once Steelback gets his um, QSS and once the Hourglass is picked up for Febivin, that also reduces the target option for Pepe Nero. Yeah, well set and well timed as we get right back into the game. Audrey? is able to pick up a kill onto Rainover in all of that. But uh, yeah, the, the Fnatic, they pushed in quite hard once they were able to get that fight. They got a dragon, they got a tower, they nearly got 
a another tower there, but they've overpushed just a little bit. And of course, not the worst thing to lose your big Nunu. When you've got even more there in the tank, but Yellow Star is going down. It looks like Audrey getting the killing spree, and Rydal goes in for the hook, and they can't quite find anything else there. But Giants, they're just not perturbed by anything. Now, that's the one thing that does work into Giants' favor. They are not reliant on being absolutely... Um, uh, they're not reliant on their ultimates. Because they've got Death Sentence, because they've got Knock-Up from Rek'Sai, they're going in they're again. Going, speaking of the Knock-Up, they get Steel back, and he's going to get taken down, but not before he picks up. The jungler, Frederick, there, they trade one for one. Managed to get a bit of a shutdown on the AD carry from Fnatic and walk it out. And every time Giants can land some of that hard CC with all of the damage threat behind it, you see how quickly they kill a target. Giants have got three kills in the space of a very short period of time. They've got deep wards into Fnatic's jungle, but they need to make use of it. They need to either bait Baron or push this massive top wave into the tower. Looks like they might be going for option number two there, quick shot. Uh, Giants, yeah, the issue with what happened in the last couple of fights is that they gave so much gold over to Fnatic, who'd been starved of it just a little bit. They started getting items back in their pocket. Even if Giants were getting some themselves, it's a little bit troubling. There goes down the smite. The minion wave's a bit depleted, but Giants still looking to push this one in. Three members of Fnatic here to defend. Well, Fabivin is on the bottom side for now with steal back. So because of the fact that Frederick wasn't in the top lane, Giants played defensively. They knew that they had a numbers advantage, at least getting up to the tower, but with steal back moving up there, Giants play it cautiously, play it safely, and back away. Febivin was pushing the side lane the entire time, still farming himself towards his hourglass. And a decent push from Giants, but a much more impressive defense from Fnatic. Mostly the threat of a team fight, keeping Giants back. That expended a lot in those previous engages. Yeah, considering the lack of wave clear that we were harping on earlier, it really is impressive that they've been able to push them back just for some hate. No, if you want to take this tower, you are going to have to fight for it. And Giants aren't really having any of that after that last dragon. No, they're definitely not. But I, I think had Giants had Frederick with them uh, as that additional front line, as that additional sort of disruption, they may have been more optimistic in the push. But sadly, wasn't the case. So Fnatic hold on to the inner turret. And look at the item. Look at the itemization really quickly. Steelback got the makings of a Bloodthirster as well as the Blade of the Rune King. Once again, showing you just how important it is for him to sustain and survive through a fight. He's going to get all of the movement speed and attack speed from Blood Boil. So that's going to synergize with the, you know, Blade of the Rune King damage and the sustain from the shield for BT, etc. So as long as Steelback can just continually attack in a team fight, not get stunned, not get locked up, he should, in theory, be able to sustain. But there's a lot of threats he needs to dodge and avoid. Yeah, there are. He's been doing a pretty darn good job of dodging out a lot of those threats of Giants, but they're really keying off of him. He, they are diving in the back line, to just completely ignoring the Alistair, completely ignoring the Nar if they can, to just take him out first. Especially since the Bivin is not quite as big at this situation. I think that's a smart move, but the execution needs improvement. Yeah, and for talking about execution, Giants have lost a tower because of some, you know, shoddy positions. They've got great vision in Fnatic's jungle. They haven't necessarily denied Fnatic's vision. If you look at the ward placements, Fnatic have got quite a few strung out across the defensive parts of uh, the top half. So for Giants, they need to use this vision they've built up to either make a play towards uh -oh. Baron or towards the top. Instead, they're going to catch Hooney. Oh, but Hooney's going to be able to hop, and there we go. Pepinero going in for a mission, but he might not live through this one. Exhaust is thrown down. Rain over, checking too far forward as Whirlit picks him up. Febivin now, Yellowstar coming in with a big knockup, and Febivin is going to get pulled in. Audrey with another kill. Meganar nearly ready, but Hooney might not get a chance to use it. They're debating if they want to find this. Here we go. He's going to go up the Nar. Completely whips. Audrey, though, is going going to be the sacrificial Corky. It is a two for one in favor of Giants. Fnatic managed to catch Giants out of position. Pepinero blew every single spell he had on Rainover, the jungler, the front line, and didn't manage to take him down for a, the longest period of time. Take a look at how, like, everybody's AOE hits everyone. There's a fantastic cannon ultimate that put the, the, the stall into Fnatic's team fight, but then Steelback just lobs Yellowstar back into Giants in a moment or two. For this team fight, because of the fact that Giants did not kill Steelback or Febivin quickly enough, they focused Nunu initially. It's the reason Giants were unable to win the fight. And unfortunately, as Huni goes Mega Nar, we just see the problems that Huni's had. Mechanically, just not on top of Nar as a champion, in contrast to his Rumble or his Lissandra. I agree completely. It's, it's been night and day in his usage of those champions. Now, nonetheless, the timely transformation, he was able to push the rest of Giants off. Still a one for two trade for Giants. 
They've got a bit of the map control now with the Scuttle Crab finished off and Dragon spawning in about 15 seconds. But Fnatic not too far behind here and they still have that Goldie, they still have the will to fight. It's gonna be close. Yeah, considering Fnatic have got so much banking on Steelback's late game power and the fact that Steelback's been able to survive both previous team fights, Giants need to make a much more coordinated team fight. Meganar is active on Huni. He does have teleport available, so we'll see if Fnatic want to engage. They're and they're going in. This. Oh, it gets stolen away. Rainover with the pick on the dragon. The fight's going to happen right after as Febbivin picks up Epinero. Whirlip in some trouble. Rydal, he's going low as well. They've already gotten two for none on top. How about three? Steelback comes up big, and Fnatic complete the collapse on Giants. Two for two. And for again, dragon. just the story of every single team fight. Pepin Nero and Frederick are not capable enough to take down Steelback. They jumped on him as best they could, and they couldn't get through the Blood Boil, the BT, and the Blade. So Fnatic with two, three kills are going to set themselves up for a fairly easy um, Baron. With, with stacks from Ren and Anunu, there's no way Frederick can steal this. He's certainly going to try, however, but Fabivin moving in. The Gnar against the wall finds Frederick. Can he tunnel? Oh, they take down the Baron. He just needed to be CC'd up, and now Frederick trying to beat a retreat. Flashes over the wall. Fabivin is there. Lasagna's is on. They take down Frederick after Audrey and a Baron on top. 28 minutes. Fnatic coming right back. Just like that, Fnatic are now in absolute control of the game. With the Baron, the Dragon, multiple team fight wins. The main thing, again, is just the damage threats of Fnatic are never in trouble. You've got every single member of Giants trapped inside this pit, and it doesn't matter because Steelback is on the back line. Yellow Star is protecting him like an absolute monster. And Febivin again gets out of there with 60% HP. Giants just cannot get the damage off the priority targets. They managed to get themselves a turret. The Baron empowered minions doing quite a lot of work. So Giants. Where did it all go wrong for them? It just seemed like they were doing excellent in lane, but then they couldn't find the fight against Steelback. You answered your own question. The I fact that they couldn't catch Steelback, the fact that they gave away a few kills, allowed Fnatic back into the game. You know, you saw Febivin picking up a solo kill onto Whirlip. You saw Steelback clawing his way in with CS. Despite the lane swap, Giants could not punish the lanes harder. And yes, they had a good lead. Yes, they had early towers. And as soon as they got the... The outer towers down. Giants just hit this massive, this brick wall, absolute zero wall, no wall, everything because they couldn't get past it. Oh. Well, not to mention, there's spears flying from the backside, and Steelbag has started to become oh so threatening. Rune and Hurricane now completed five, two, and three on this Callista. We'll see what they do next. Yeah, the scariest thing for Giants, because of the fact that Steelbag is now five, two, and three, and he's got all of his damage to put out. Giants no longer want to put themselves in extended siege. They don't ever want to be in a position where they're grouped up and at risk of a five-man pulverize because Steelback's just going to tear through them. Oh. Look at the damage Febiv is putting on Pepe Nero. Yeah, he thought he might have had an angle for just a moment, but having to bail out of that one. Rain over Yellow Star now pushing in with Steelback as Febiv and moves to um, the mid side. Huni going to try to split push out this tower. It's actually just going to be the rest of them moving on up to the top to push this one in. They don't need wave clear when they've got the wave on their side, quick shot. Yeah, that's the case. And that's what Fnatic are going to continue to be able to do. Take a look at your ward placements for Fnatic. They haven't got the strongest, but they're pushing the wave so deep, they can just rotate from top to middle lane, and they have done what Giants were unable to. Look at Steelback. Yep, yeah, it's going to be Whirlip going in. He gets his on. He's on the last minute, but he's got no backup, and he's going to go down. Pepe Nero trying everything he can, but Steelback just shrugs it off. Three members of Giants Gaming killed. Rydal pulls him right in. He goes down a double kill over to Fabivin. 30 minutes into the game, the inhibitor goes down. Audrey, the only one left alive. I don't think the Giants can hold this line. Nexus turrets are falling very, very quickly, and Fnatic complete the turnaround. 30 and a half minutes in, they take the win. Despite a strong start from Giants, they just simply were not able to take advantage of the lead. Yes, Fnatic had Baron in that final push, but the way that they transition from pressure on the top tower to pressure on the inhibitor turret is exactly what Giants needs to learn to do. They had the opportunity, they had the vision in Fnatic's jungle, they had the lead, they had the wave clear, and unfortunately they did not transition from tower one to tower two. That is what gave Fnatic all the time they needed to scale.
Big cheer going up for the Fanatic fans. For just a couple of moments, it looked a bit uncertain, but the faithful were not shaken. And a big smile on Huni's face. He's really famous now. And you know what? That was a better NAR performance. Um, you know, if you look at his stat line, 2 0 10, he was in position more often. Yes, one or two ultimates whiffed, but it was his ultimate of Frederick at the Baron Pit that sort of guaranteed that safe objective. And the front line, I always felt like he was in the right place. I never felt like Huni was way out of line or, you know, away from his team. The way that Fnatic peeled for Steelback with their composition was, was quite beautiful to behold. And the fact that the only death that Steelback really had was from the very early laning phase is a testament to how well they played those team fights out. Yeah, and I, I feel like they played out exactly what they needed to once they started scaling up. Once Giants got a little over aggressive uh, and started losing a couple of fights, the gold back in the pockets of Fnatic, they used that so efficiently to complete the items they needed. They started getting individual picks. Giants started getting scattered. And they still were playing like they were ahead. Oh, we can take a fight here. We can take a fight there. By the time they realized they couldn't, it was too late. I agree. And the main thing for Giants is that the very first team fight where they, they absolutely had to win, they simply did not. And that was the kills that allowed Steelback to get back into the game, you know, pull himself up. At one point, top, middle, and bottom were down 20 CS each. And Giants squandered it. So it, it's just one of the stories that we do see from Giants. They had a great game against Unicorns last week, partially because Unicorns were not playing to their usual standard. But traditionally, when Giants have got the lead, they've been able to use it. Yeah, uh, it really is kind of dry, close-cut case in that situation. So Giants gaming... Um, they played really, really well in the lane phase. That is, as we mentioned, where Fnatic had seemed to struggle. They had a really good pick and ban phase. They focused out Huni. Um, and on that NAR, going back to it, he did step up. I think in the early game, he was a little bit shakier on it. Yep. But he's shown that he's not just a man of two, th two or three champions. So I was impressed by that. I, I, think, I think it's still a little bit to desire. Like, you look at Huni's, uh, Huni's NAR compared to Odo Omne's NAR, and you do kind of feel like they're, they're, they're different scales. But then Fair. you take... Hooney's Rumble, and you go anyone else in Europe and kind of go, mm, you know, it, it's, it's all Hooney. So That's why they ban he, it. he has his strengths and weaknesses. But for Giants, this is much more important. They only have seven games left. So four wins, seven losses. Meet Your Make is currently one win, nine losses. It, it feels like it's a big swing, but if MYM take down Giants, if MYM pull off a few more surprise upsets, you feel like at the moment that MYM and Giants are the two teams that will be fighting for that ninth and tenth position. Assuming teams like Rocket and Elements can fix the problems, but we'll have to find that out later in the day. Exactly. You get into that danger zone, and you don't want to be in the relegation or even in the promotion tournament zone as well. And they're not going to have the easiest week. This, you know, They played a Fnatic today. They're going to be playing H2K tomorrow. <laughs> uh, not exactly. And it's also first games of the day. So, you know, even if the jitters happen earlier on, that's the problem. They kind of seem to have the same problem we saw Unicorns Love have a few weeks back. They just, they've got the on switch, but yeah. they don't have the breaks. Yeah, what I, what I really like from Fnatic this game, it's a modification of their style. They weren't actually very focused on pick. They weren't very focused on kill somebody then take a tower. They were a lot more focused on, look, we'll wait for the team fights. We've got this reactive um, kiting and, and zoning team comp. And once you jump on us, we'll just outplay you in team fights. They've done it against every other team. Fnatic have got phenomenal team fight communication, despite the Korean top half and French bottom half, like we heard in the, the pregame feature. They, they make it work. Yes, they really do. And these team fights are a perfect example. Yeah, exactly. And it just seems so seamless there. In the lane phase, you know, yeah, it didn't look that great. Obviously, Giants had the jump on him. Um, and we always were talking about how Steelback has, has a CS deficit. Actually, surprising when I found that. I was like, wait a minute. He's behind the lane. Yeah, that's right. But yeah. then he gets massive. Yeah. And it's because they protect him just so well. And they have so much map pressure all over the place. So really impressive in that regard. And an instant lane swap from when Steelback yes. lost his flash up top. You saw Huni teleport. You saw Steelback back away and say, look, I don't want to be in this lane. Um, nobody really wants to go Corky Thresh v Alistair Callista, especially without items. So it was smart. It allowed uh, Steelback to stay just a little behind his opposite number. And then the first team fight happens, and all of a sudden he gets ahead and stays ahead. The Bloodthirster plus uh, Blade of the Rune King plus the Blood Boil from Nunu made that work, made the sustain happen. And it was just very smart itemization, very smart. Very smart team comp that was taking advantage of Fnatic strengths. Yeah, and once they got the Hurricane, too, it just absolutely moved yeah. out of control. Um, for Febivin, too, he didn't look like a massive threat until he was, and then all of a sudden, when he chased down Whirlip, it was like, oh, oh I can't fight that. That's not good. It's, it's Cassadin. Yeah. Like, okay, it's 5.3 Cassadin. On 5.3, <laughs> Cassadin at some point will become a threat. Febivin became a threat and then just started 
jumping on people's faces. Yeah, and that was pretty much the story of the game. So now over to the analyst desk, we're going to head where Shox is joined by Hooney and Rainover for a look into...